Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings, the channel dedicated to retro tech, innovation, science, and technological entertainment. This is part six of our coverage of the SpaceX Dragon 2 Demo 2 launch and docking at the International Space Station. Part one, the launch, was covered in short 18. Part two, the docking, was covered in short 19. Part three, the speeches, was covered in short 20. Part four, the booster, was covered in short 21. Part 5, The Capsule, was covered in Short 22. Links to all five can be found below. If there is one overarching theme about the SpaceX and NASA Demo-2 mission, is that all the equipment has a futuristic look. The rocket, unlike the Atlas V and Soyuz 2, is sleek, futuristic, and even returns to a landing pad for reuse instead of crashing into the ocean. The Dragon 2 Capsule which was originally designed to return to Earth on a landing pad like the Falcon 9 first stage, shows smooth sculpted lines, while its contemporaries the Orion, the Starliner, and the Soyuz MS look a lot like the Apollo capsule, which was designed in the 1960s. The SpaceX launch gantry capsule ramp at Launch Complex 39A is a glossy, sleek construct, more like a boarding tunnel for an aircraft. This compares favorably to the crane-like structure the ULA uses at Launch Complex 41 and the locomotive-pulled lattice superstructure used by RKK Energia at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The SpaceX design aesthetic even applies to the spacesuits that astronauts Benkin and Hurley used for the Demo-2 mission. Of course, by spacesuits, what we really mean are the flight suits that they wore. Actual spacesuits can withstand the vacuum and harsh environment of space. The Dragon 2 crew capsule is merely transport and is not intended for EVAs like that possible at the International Space Station. Rather, the SpaceX flight suit is designed to provide oxygen, temperature control, communications, and even pressurize if the capsule's hull integrity is degraded. As you can see from this 1960s NASA clip, a full spacesuit like that for the Apollo missions is clearly more robust and necessarily bulky. Even the helmet is more robust, with a face shield designed to be impact resistant and polarized against solar light. SpaceX released a short clip about its flight suit on the original May 27, 2020 launch day and re-released it three days before the successful launch, briefly describing the basic functionality of its flight suit and how it was made. Let's check it out. I think one of the things that was important in the development of the suit was to make it easy to use, something that the crew just has to literally plug in when they sit down and then the, the suit kind of takes care of itself from there. So the suit is really kind of one part of the bigger Dragon system. It's really part of the vehicle. So um, we think of it as kind of a suit seat system. So the seat that the crew is in and the suit are in a lot of ways working together. And so it made sense that we were designing Dragon in-house to also design the suit. Our spacesuit is completely designed in-house. It's built here in Hawthorne, California, in the same building as the rocket and the capsule. The spacesuit is uh, custom made for each crew member, and that is to optimize the fit for the crew member. We definitely wanted to innovate and we wanted it to look inspiring, but first and foremost, we wanted it to be, be safe and reliable. The spacesuit's primary purpose is to protect the crew in the unlikely event that the cabin were to depressurize. But the suit does a number of additional things. It provides cooling and communication to the crew inside of the suit, it provides them hearing protection, and the outer layer of the suit is flame resistant, so it provides flame protection as well. When the crew gets in the capsule, they get in their seats and they plug the suit into the umbilical that's attached to the seat. And the umbilical is providing everything that the suit needs. So it provides um, the avionics or electronics for communications, it's providing the air to cool the suit, and then it also provides gas when needed to pressurize the suit. So it's really a single point that lets the suit do all the things that it needs to do. We designed the helmet in-house. The helmet serves a number of different functions. Obviously, it's protecting the crew's head and it's retaining gas like the rest of the suit, but it also houses the microphones as well as the valves that are uh, regulating pressure in the suit. We had to design the gloves so that they would work with the touchscreens, but the gloves also still had to do a number of other things like the rest of the suit. So all of those things had to come together uh, within the glove. It'll be obviously really amazing to see Bob and Doug in their flight suits and 
I think one of the things that's cool about the suit is it's not just a piece of hardware, it's not just a suit, it's a very personal thing. It's Bob's suit and it's Doug's suit. And so seeing the two of them in their, in their suits, using it in flight will be just uh, a really amazing thing. If among the viewers there are some that are old enough to have seen 2001 Space Odyssey, you might have noticed a distinct similarity between the SpaceX flight suit and the spacesuits used in the movie. Not the spacesuits on the USS Discovery 1, which were multicolored, but rather the suits used on the moon earlier in the movie. The coloration, the body lines, and the helmet style is quite strikingly similar to the SpaceX design. Of course, the similarity between the movie and the SpaceX design could just be wishful thinking. After all, the white SpaceX flight suit is white because that is one of the primary colors of SpaceX's equipment. Similarly, Boeing, whose logo color is cobalt blue, produced blue Starliner flight suits. Boeing has also published a clip about their flight suit, so let's see it. The first impression one gets from the Starliner flight suit, which is otherwise similar in functionality and even visually to the Dragon 2 suit, is that its major design cues appear to come from the Space Shuttle flight suits, with the exception that the shuttle suits were colored orange. The helmet style is bulbous, like a hard shell spacesuit helmet, clearly a non-functional design choice, and the environmental connections are placed in similar spots on the torso. The quick takeaway from comparing the Dragon 2 and Starliner flight suits is that they are both lightweight, modernized updates of the 20th century flight suit. The Boeing version weighs about 20 pounds, 10 pounds less than the shuttle suit, and the SpaceX version is a little less than the Boeing suit. Both suits also allow for the use of 21st century touchscreen displays with suit gloves, and both take advantage of modern communication linkages through a port in the suit. Rather than updating the styling of the venerable shuttle flight suit, Lockheed Martin elected to go full retro. The Orion Artemis flight suit is wholly adapted from the styling of the shuttle suit, even going as far as using the same colors and the 20th century style steel hoop connector and helmet for the head. Durability and ruggedness may have been a design consideration for the Orion flight suit, as the suit has to be reliable millions of miles from Earth, while if there is a problem with the Dragon 2 or Starliner suits, the astronauts merely deorbit and return to Earth. What do you think of the SpaceX Dragon 2 and the Boeing Starliner flight suits? Let us know by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this brief on modern space flight suit designs. Be sure to stay tuned through the International Space Station closing sequence as there is a bonus clip of the Artemis Z1 spacesuit that is being designed to replace the Apollo spacesuit that was used on the moon. Thanks for watching.
Kirsten. Kirsten, you got a little something right there. <laughs> Unbelievable. 